September 20th, 1952. A date that no citizen of Portland, Oregon is likely to forget. It began like an ordinary day. Dawn creeping across the majestic timbered mountains. Rivet guns hammering reveille in the shipyards. And commerce beginning to move down the Columbia River to the sea. Yet on this day, the people of Portland had awakened to view a miracle. Within hours, Portland would become the first city in America to have commercial ultra-high-frequency television. To meet the great promise of UHF, antennas were sprouting all over the city and surrounding area. Housewives had rearranged their schedules, rushed through their shopping. Families, eager, anxious, hung poised before their receivers as Portland prepared to tune in a bright new world. UHF was on the air. Then, within a moment, chaos struck the city. It was as if a new kind of fog had descended, a fog of confusion, frustration, and anger. The people of Portland had been cheated. Most sets can't pick up UHF. How can you sell a set that won't even give a picture? This is the ninth place I've been in, Mac. Every one of these sets with a continuous tuner drifts and won't hold the station. Well, that's nothing but a snowstorm. And even distributors said, You heard me. Your sets won't receive UHF. If we can't believe you manufacturers, then who can we believe? Yes, who can you believe about UHF? What's the great mystery? Why the fog of confusion? Actually, UHF is no more difficult to understand than VHF. Back in the early days of television, the FCC assigned this band of the spectrum to VHF, or very high frequency. Notice there are 12 channels here. Now, to avoid interference between these channels or stations, only every other channel could be assigned in any given area. This, of course, limited the number of stations in each market. By the time we'd reached 108 VHF stations, it became pretty obvious that TV had outgrown the number of available channels. At that point, the FCC put a freeze on station construction permits until a further study could be made to eliminate station interference between cities close by. After several years of investigation, the FCC finally opened up the ultra-high-frequency, or UHF, band, making room for 70 channels and 1,442 ultra-high-frequency stations. Suddenly, a fantastic horizon had opened up for the TV industry. UHF meant that almost every city and every area would be within range of several different TV stations. Two fringe areas where formerly a weak VHF picture had been received, UHF meant a clear, strong, noise-free picture. A picture that was able to reject annoying interferences far better than the old VHF. Interferences caused by small appliances, diathermy machines, ignition systems, police and amateur radio stations, taxi cab and truck two-way radio systems. UHF was a wonderful and exciting prospect. Yet, strangely enough, most TV manufacturers were not prepared to meet its challenge. This, of course, was what caused the fog of confusion in Portland. When station KPTV went on the air two months ahead of schedule, most manufacturers, long ignoring UHF, were caught unawares. Their dealers short of merchandise. Most sets were unproved and untested. The public, desperate to buy sets, found frustration and confusion everywhere. The performance of many receivers wouldn't bear out the claims their manufacturers had made about them. Set D's UHF, for instance, was merely an ornament, labeled UHF, while set A, ignoring the future, had provided an adapter that allowed for only two UHF channels. In Portland, pandemonium mounted. Deliberate rumors were spread. With that brand of set, if you're more than 15 miles from the transmitter, you can't get a picture. That's right, George. You have to have a converter to get UHF. Meanwhile, pressure on the dealers was mounting. All sorts of weird antennas were being rushed to the city. 
Manufacturers, too, had entered in the fight. Those who made sets B and C using the continuous tuner attacked all turret tuners in a desperate effort to establish themselves in this important market. Zenith was wrongly included in these smears because some other sets with turret tuners did not operate well. Claim fought with counterclaim. So-called news releases screamed out from Portland papers. And the public grew more angry, more confused, more desperate to find a TV set that would justify the wonderful promise of UHF. In some areas where Hills made it seemingly impossible to get good pictures, people actually made plans to sell their homes. Portland wanted UHF, and it wanted it bad. For example, Mrs. Mabel Dunn of Canby, Oregon, 25 miles away from Portland, cut down a path of pine trees which had been blocking the signal. Manufacturers were frantic to establish their product in this market. Here is a news picture of a so-called mobile demonstration that displayed all sets. It visited Portland to persuade dealers that one manufacturer's set operated best and actually displayed other sets, including Zenith, operating at a disadvantage. The Zenith group, shocked by the fog of misinformation, prepared to combat this propaganda with a campaign that would clear the air, that would tell the truth to the public about UHF, the truth about the turret tuners and strips which Zenith had perfected long ago. The truth, of course, is in this Zenith guarantee, which has been attached to every Zenith TV receiver ever built or sold to the public. This Zenith TV set, like every Zenith TV receiver ever built, has built-in provision for tuner strips to receive ultra-high frequency channels without an external converter. Now I'll tell you why Zenith is so well-equipped to meet the UHF future. As long as eight years ago, Zenith engineers began working with silicon crystals in an effort to solve the intricate problems of UHF reception. While conducting wartime experiments, Zenith UHF research experts became convinced that germanium crystals could supplement the less suitable, more delicate and expensive silicons. After years of tireless and expensive work, the problem was solved. Endless experiments absolutely proved that germanium crystals would do the best possible job. Zenith was not only spending years of engineering and solving its problems, but as far back as 1946, Zenith was actually operating its own UHF test channel in Chicago. When the experimental UHF channel in Bridgeport, Connecticut went on the air, several hundred Zenith sets already operating in homes had UHF strips installed and they immediately received perfect pictures for the two and a half years this station was in operation. The key to Zenith's UHF is and always has been this famous turret tuner. Now, there are many kinds of turret tuners, but only one instant automatic station selector, which is Zenith's exclusive tuner, a tuner so well designed and carefully constructed that it gives truly superior performance. Because of this mechanism, every Zenith set ever built can receive UHF without relying on converters or gadgets of any kind. This tuner uses cascode circuits with triode tubes instead of pentodes, all of which means less thermal noise and eliminates snow on the picture. In addition to that, Zenith's engineering design actually increases range by one-third extends reception a third further away from the station. This explains Zenith's outstanding performance in the fringe areas. And when you tune your picture in, instead of having a drift of 400 kilocycles like some other sets, which requires a fine tuning adjustment, Zenith's picture hits the target every time, which means you can select any station you want exactly without making one other adjustment. Now important as all these features are, there is still one vital reason why Zenith's turret tuner is surpassed by no other. This is the Zenith turret tuner strip. With these strips in the tuner, the owner receives the ultimate in UHF reception with instant automatic selection. This is possible because Zenith, unlike all other TV manufacturers, designs, makes, 
test and perfect its own tuner strips. Every strip is subjected to rigid quality control. Its germanium crystals, like these, are tested and must meet the highest engineering standards. These Zenith-made strips, unlike any others, employ the single rather than the double superheterodyne principle, which means simply that they do not pick up other interferences that most other sets do. It's true that many other sets did not operate well in Portland, but the Zenith receivers with strips tailor-made, controlled in quality, more than justified the painstaking labor and research that went into them. Even in the most difficult fringe areas, they are giving unexcelled performance. Yes, and it was Zenith's performance that lifted the fog over Portland. The Zenith distributor in Portland, Mr. George Curry, verifies this Zenith performance. We've sold literally thousands of Zenith TV sets since our station went on the air uh, September 20th. And during this time, I have had inquiries from all over the United States asking me to give them the true story of how the Zenith turret tuner strips work. And I can say this truthfully, that the Zenith turret tuner strips perform remarkably well up as far as 70 miles uh, airline from our uh, station, which is still operating on uh, low power. Uh, also, they have clearly demonstrated their ability to outperform any of our competition. Yes, Mr. Curry was the pioneer distributor in ultra high frequency. And all over Portland, the story was the same. Zenith UHF reception was unsurpassed. Dealers were enthusiastic. Uh, my name is Dio Palmer, owner of Palmer's Appliance Store in Portland, Oregon. Uh, so far as we're concerned at our store, Zenith is tops in performance. We are sold 100% on the turret tuner. So far as we're concerned, it can't be beat. To meet the tremendous demand for quality UHF reception, Zenith sets were rushed into Portland. And dealers like Fred Green wanted to talk about Zenith's performance. Hello, folks. I'm Fred Green, owner of Green's Hall Appliance in Portland, Oregon. When we first started this television business, we started with eight lines. In this length of time, we have sold more Zeniths than the combination of all the other lines combined. Probably one of the reasons that we have sold more Zeniths is because we don't use a converter in the Zenith. We have a lot of them in the back room that need to be serviced in the converters, and we don't have that problem with Zenith at all. This is what Fred Green means by converter trouble. In his service department, 39 converters are in for repair. On the outskirts of Portland, in the Woodland Park section, another dealer gives his opinion of Zenith. I'm Bill Ryan of Woodland Park Appliance, and we've found that the Zenith set is very easy to sell, very easy to service, and no other set, regardless of tuner, will outperform it. And according to dealers like John Burgess, the news about Zenith was traveling fast. I'm John B. Burgess of Burgess Furniture and Appliance at Canby, Oregon. I found that when I sell one Zenith TV in an area, I usually sell more in the same area due to the customers telling their friends of the perfect performance on Zenith TV. Men who install and service television sets had their opinions, too. I'm Fred McNaughton of McNaughton's TV in Milwaukee. Uh, I handle eight brands of television, and of these, uh, Zenith has outsold all the rest of them put together. Uh, I think there are several reasons for this, uh, one of which uh, is that they give a consistently little sharper picture. Uh, another one is the ease of tuning. My name is Roger Odom, service manager. We have installed and serviced about 15 odd makes of television receivers in one of the roughest areas around Portland and nothing so far has approached Zenith's performance for fringe area. In fact, out of the eight odd servicemen we have in our organization, six of them now own Zenith television receivers and the other two are planning to soon purchase one. Yes, the fog had lifted over Portland, but important lessons had been learned. Here in the Rocky Butte area, all through the Maywood Park District, for instance, where other sets would not operate due to hills, Zenith sets were giving maximum reception, and Zenith customers were being made. My name is Arthur Jackson of Portland, Oregon. I live in a suburban area directly behind a large hill known as Rocky Butte. I tried 
two separate makes of television sets that had been recommended for good reception in fringe areas. The reception was disappointing. I then tried a 21-inch Marlboro Zenith console, and I have had a perfect snow-free picture from the first day of installation. And in the little town of Canby, 22 miles from Portland, the story is the same. I'm Mrs. Beck from Canby, Oregon. We are very pleased with our Zenith TV set. We are getting a better picture than any I've seen elsewhere around Canby. Zenith Advanced Engineering had met the challenge, and its guarantee that every Zenith has built-in provision for tuner strips to receive UHF channels was backed up. Hello there, I'm Paul Leslie. I purchased this 16-inch Zenith television set in Pasadena four years ago. I brought it with me to Portland, set it up and received Seattle, some 145 miles away, and enjoying wonderful reception. On September 20th, when the nation's first ultra-high frequency station went on the air, station KPTV, we inserted a 27-channel strip in the turret tuner of my Zenith and am enjoying wonderful reception. Yes, Zenith performed better. And that was what lifted the fog over Portland. But that same fog of confusion and misinformation can well spread all across the country. It may hit your area when UHF comes there. Now you can meet the propaganda of other manufacturers by the truth about Zenith's remarkable turret tuner. You can beat the poor performance of other makes by ordering your tuner strips before the station goes on the air. And you can end the confusion by teaching your personnel the real story about UHF. For when the fog finally had lifted over Portland, Zenith receivers with the instant automatic station selector had proved to be unsurpassed in performance, had been proved by thousands of owners themselves to be the satisfying answer to the problems of UHF reception. In the fringe areas of Portland, at Salem, 52 miles away, Zenith customers were getting excellent reception. And even in Corvallis, 88 miles from the transmitter, Zenith receivers were outstanding in performance. Yes, the difficulties of distance and geography had been solved by Zenith Advanced Engineering. New horizons of greater sales opportunities had been created.